gentlemen, it is always great to see you because it's almost like for me, it's, it's hooking up with family because we've been doing this for so long. Yeah. Um, I got it straight out. How does it feel being one of Canada's premier bands, whether it be rock, pop, R&B, whatever, you guys have been able to take almost every genre, mesh it together and make such a great sound. And it's a sound that represents Canada, but man, everybody loves it all over the world. Well, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big question. <laughs> Um, if you say so. No. I do say no, so. That's good. It, it is fun to, to experiment with the music as we grow and change the sound a little bit to suit the themes of the albums. Um, and it's cool that you also think we are worthy of leading provinces the premier band of Canada. It's funny you said that because I was eating yogurt the other day and on the container it said Canada's premier yogurt and I was sort of, I don't know why, it just made me think of... <laughs> but you guys have been... Like, you guys have been together for so long, and you, something works with you guys, you know? Does it? I think, you don't uh, think so? Arguably. Yeah. Arguably. It's, yeah. No, you're right. It works. I think, <laughs> I works. think honestly, I think we just, um, I think we're, we still just have fun making music together, you know? And I, I think, really, that's the, that's, the, that's the only real secret. I think we're just still enjoying what we do and enjoying each other's company and doing it. But how do you guys challenge yourselves, though, when you know that, Basically, everything you guys have done musically has been very successful. So how do you sit back and go, well, hell, how do we top this? Or do you even think about that? I think artistically, you look at topping yourself. Um, I, I think, like, actual success, success, like, there's so much of that that comes down to luck. And I, I, don't, I don't think it's healthy to just try and just go for that. Um, for me, I, I, I just try and look at the songs that we've put out in the past and try and do something that will surprise myself first and then hopefully surprise these guys and then go from there. What was the thought then when you guys were putting together this new album? Um, because I think it, like the last time I saw you guys, I think it was literally a year ago. And there was sort of talk that this was gonna be happening. So throughout that year, what was going on? Uh, lots of recording. We were just, um just figuring out the album, uh, getting the first couple songs under our belt, Wait get some minute. momentum. So when, when we saw you, that was at the Junos, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we started recording like... Just before that. Like, or just after that or something, like right then and there. Yeah. 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 So I guess we've been in the studio since, since then. Yeah. <laughs> to now. How crazy was it for you guys? Like how many songs was going on here? I'm going to get, I want to talk about the, uh, the songs and the theme and everything else, but how many songs were you guys working on? And you're saying you're in the studio so much, like how much were you guys in the studio? Well. Uh, I mean, we were in the studio a lot. Like it was uh, every day. From I mean, Josh would be there at noon till midnight, pretty much five, six days a week for the last year. Um, so we were working really, really hard at it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when when these songs were coming to you, man, like how many songs did you have? together before choosing what was going to happen oh, on this album? Uh, we don't really work that way. Well, oh. we, we start an album with no ideas mm -hmm. and uh, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll sort of go in and just do it one song at a time until each song is done uh, until there's an album. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that the way you guys have always done this? Except for the first album. Yeah. The first album, first album in some ways is, is a lot easier because um, you've had your whole life to write it and you just kind of pick the 12 best songs you ever wrote and off you go. Mm -hmm. And that was, I remember being so stressed out when we did the second album because I, I was very well aware that we had just picked the best songs to do the first album. And I was like, and now I just have like six months to do something that's better than that. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we basically just start with nothing and uh, go until it feels like there's an album. So how does this album represent you guys right now, do you think? Um, I think uh, I think songwriting style it's super current for sure. Even though um, uh, the sonic qualities of it aren't necessarily current, they're a little more classic, little, very like organic sounds. Not a lot of programming on the album, even though it kind of feels like it is. We were sort of looking at ways to do. Uh, I guess you know if I think about it, I've sort of made a career of doing that. We're like looking at like the current radio trends and tricks and then being like, but let's put it on real instruments. I think we've kind of been doing that the whole time actually. But it's kind of like that. So when you guys heard the songs, I mean, what did you, like, how much, uh, I can't even say the word, contributing do you guys do for the music also? Because I know, Josh, you do most of the writing and everything, but how much do you guys contribute on this also? I think we, were, we were just talking about this before, like, like Josh has got a really good idea of, of where the song is going in his brain before it even 
before anybody ever hears anything of it. And then, and then we get into the studio and, and Josh sort of pieces together all these kind of like a, a temporary drum track and bass track and stuff. And then, and then the song just gets built around that. And, uh, and it's really interesting, like particularly with some of the longer, like more um, uh, artsy tracks that we do, Josh will be like, okay, and now we're going to this section. And you're like, it's all in his head, but to us it makes no sense at all. So you go into the studio and you're like, dude, I don't know what you were talking about, but I'm gonna trust your gut on this and, 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 uh, and we're well, gonna play this guitar part here because it seems to make sense here. And then, and then, uh, and then somehow it all turns into this like magnificent piece of music, and, and it's like uh, it's really weird in the studio, but um, we have a lot of fun with it, and and he hasn't led us astray yet. So it can uh, be hard. It can be hard sometimes to pitch song ideas because I'll be like, um, a, a really important role that the guys play is I'll I'll sort of come in and go, okay, so the melody could go, bum bum, or it could go and it's just sort of very similar but opposite and I'm looking for someone to say like that's the one that that resonates with me the most and stuff like that um, so that's sort of like the pop version but when it's these more symphonic songs it can be difficult because it'll be like there's a section in my head where we're going to modulate four times and I'm hearing an entire symphony orchestra but all I can play you guys is just this guide piano track. And that can be, and I'll be like singing, being like, yeah, you know, and then timpani will be like, bum, 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 bum. Me you know, and then strings are like, ah. I don't know, man, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work. And lo and behold, it does. How would you compare your first album to this one? Oh my God, that's the one thing you're, the one thing you're saying is when you're recording that first album, you have all this time to, to, to craft it and then pick from the pool of songs. But as you go further through your career, you become better at the craft. So it's, uh, it's a different process and maybe you have less time to do it, but I think the ability to, uh, to realize the vision of each song is easier to do. Yeah. Well, hopefully, anyway, yeah, yeah. If that, that's a, assuming that one is improving, which hopefully we are. <laughs> um, I'm, I definitely think the songwriting style, like the songwriting as a whole, I think is uh, probably more sophisticated now than what we were, sure. would have been capable of on that first album. Um, and uh, I also think it's really easy for us to do our vocals in the studio now, whereas like, cause that's a big part of the sound of our band where it's kind of like usually pretty obvious who's gonna sing what part and we kind of just like, oh yeah, okay. So I, it takes a lot less practice for us to be able to do those parts now. No, you know, we keep saying the album, the album. What's the album called? It's called Phantoms. Who came up with the name Phantoms? Why Phantoms? Well, um, I was, I just couldn't, it, the title came really late on this album, like do you, usually. Do you know where the, actually all this stuff started was when we were on tour uh, in the United States, we were in New Orleans, New Orleans and yeah. Josh was really moved by like the sort of the voodoo culture down there. And I think he, he said to us, he was like, you know, it'd be really cool to do a record that sort of, that drew from, from this, this stuff. And, and, uh, and it was just a very early idea. And, and then from that, it, it sort of trickled down into... Yeah, it was like we were, we were on tour and we had that day off in New Orleans and I was, I was super inspired. Um, and one of the things I really liked about it is that like the, the sort of ghost and death culture thing isn't necessarily a negative thing. Like it's like a positive, like, you know, commuting with your family and like when someone dies, there's a parade. It's and yeah. it's, there's like a it's happiness morose, to it. There's, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it was also that I came back on the bus after that day and a couple of guys in our crew were watching the Adams Family <laughs> on the bus. And I was like, you know what would be cool is if the live show felt like you were in the Adams Family house. And I remember that was like a big, a big yeah. thing. Not that any of the songs sound like fucking no. da 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 dun or whatever it is. <laughs> there's, no, there's none of that. Okay, the new single is called, what's the new single is called what? I Knew You Went is the, is the single. Okay. Yeah. Because I had a chance to listen to it. And one of the things I thought to myself was it almost sounds like two songs put together. Oh, you're talking oh, about you're Echoes of You. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. Echoes of yeah. You. It sounds like two songs put together because the, 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 from the, putting the chorus on one side to everything else, everything else sounds like I said, one song. And then the chorus comes in and it's something completely different. It's almost like majestic and pop and you put it together. Um, there was this, you know, the way that that song came to be was I, I had the melody for the like verse, the pre-chorus and the chorus for a really long time. Mm -hmm. But in my head, it, it initially sounded like a, like an EDM song or something like it, it had that kind of feel to it. Um, but like I said, I wanted us to do everything organically. So then I was sort of going, okay, so we're, we're thinking about 
these haunted places and stuff, so let's try and really like hammer that home with this song and, and put in these haunted sounding things. So I basically took out the club synth and put it on a harpsichord, and we took out like this part and put it on a theremin, and we like sort of replaced all of the sounds that you would do on a normal like club song with all these weird organic sounds. Um, and then that bridge, I guess there's kind of two bridges and an outro, I guess. It's a bit of a longer song, um, but uh, I don't know, I guess like, the, some of the sounds that are playing the sort of staccato things in the, in, the, in the chorus were symphonic sounds, so it seemed to make sense to all of a sudden then just bring in a symphony. Um, I don't know, it just, it just seemed to make sense. It, it, it seemed like it made sense to me. I don't is, know. is that the first time you guys have worked with a symphony? No, no, no. We've, uh, since our second album, I feel like we've been using strings. Even on the first one we did on uh, Alibis. Yeah, so every album has had some symphonic stuff. I love that because to me that's old school. Old school groups loved using symphonies. And I always feel like when a band is doing that, the artistic uh, sound of the band is starting to grow when you start using those kind of things. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, there's a certain... It becomes a, a lot more difficult. Like, as yeah. soon as you're writing, like, there's, there's okay, we're just going to have strings. That's one thing. But to say we're going to have a whole symphony is another, that's a whole other thing. But that's a challenge for you. Of course it is. Yeah. And, it's, and it's an inspiring challenge. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's one that I sort of continue to learn about on, on records. And they, uh, like, it's not like we'll do symphony orchestra on every song or anything. But the songs where we do use them, it's getting more and more complex uh, as we yeah. become more experienced. Yeah, in, yeah. In exactly. Josh's arrangement skills have gone, like, they're... They've really, really improved over the over the records. You know, that's a very difficult thing to do. To, Thanks, to, Matt. Well, no, seriously. Like, if I had to write parts for an entire symphony orchestra, I don't know where to begin. Like, that's and you, and there's so much to know that the the ranges of each instrument and the and the, you know, um, well, there's a lot to know. I can't think of examples right now. But that's but the point. I don't even know I, what I, I need know. to know. I don't know. So yeah, but it, <laughs> yeah. So so how are you guys going to do this? Because this now is going to be part of a tour that's happening mm -hmm. too. That is correct, <laughs> and we're figuring it out right now. Yeah, yeah. Where's Where's the tour going to be going? From what to what? Do we know yet? We're going to uh, be sorry. We're, we're going to be all over the place. We got a We got a month in Canada through March. We got uh, five six weeks through the states in May, and then it's just going to keep expanding from there. We'll be all over the world with this one. As we speak, are we going to see you guys at the Juno Awards? Do you think this year, or what's no, going to happen? We can't go because we're on tour at the exact time that the yeah. Junos are on, so we can't go this okay. year. Okay. Well, here's the thing, though, because you guys weren't at the MMVAs last year. We were recording this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? They changed the date of the MMVAs yes. somewhat last minute. Yeah. Um, and we had already committed to playing a Vancouver show, which was the day before. But it would have been impossible to make it. But you guys know you guys are the king of the red carpet. You guys don't show up. <laughs> I, like, it, it's painful. I tell you, with all the time we spent in the studio, it was definitely nice to have one less thing to worry about this year. <laughs> well, the, the real, but what will we wear? The real story is we couldn't get the permits for what we wanted to do right, on the red carpet. Yeah. So we're like... Forget this. We're not coming to this event. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, guys, uh, the tours, is it happening now? Like, it's happening that's, March. That's March 6th. March, March, March 6th, first show, yeah. Fantastic. And the album is out? March when? 1st. March 1st. Gentlemen, it is always a pleasure getting the chance to talk to you guys. I am crossing my fingers, you guys. Seriously, I missed you guys on the red carpet at the MMVAs. <laughs> it's not the same. But I think more importantly, man, the, the fact that you guys have evolved the way you have with your music, with this new album, I, you know what? I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do next because this album is amazing. Thank you. The music is fantastic. And to come up with something even better than that, it's just like, wow. You guys definitely represent what Canada is all about when it comes to music, man. We don't pretend to represent anything, but, but thank you. That's really nice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, uh, hopefully, like I said, cross fingers. I'll see you guys on the red carpet, the MNBAs. Awesome. Thanks, Rudy. <laughs> Thanks, Rudy.